In this video, I'd like to continue talking about step functions, particularly what is known as the floor function. And in the next video, we'll talk about the ceiling function, which goes along with the floor function. So the floor function is a specific type of step function, or in other words, it's an infinite step function, which we usually denote with a sort of bracket notation that looks something like that, where the x value is within the brackets. Let me make it a little bit more clear. So something like that. And notice that the bracket is on the floor here. And the definition of this function is that the y value is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So let's get an idea of how this works by just making a table. So let me construct that very quickly. So we have our x values and then we have our function values, our floor function values. So for integers, this is very straightforward. So one, two, three, we'll just look at a few of them. When you plug in an integer, so like let's say we plug in the x value of one, the y value, the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So if x is 1 and y is that greatest integer that is less than or equal to 1, then y is just 1 there. So whenever you plug in an integer, you just get back that integer value. So nothing too exciting there. But this function does become interesting when you plug in decimals. Let's say we plug in 1.4. So the y value is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 1.4 in this case. So the integer that is less than this and the greatest integer less than this would be 1. Now recognize there are many, or in fact infinite, integers less than 1.4. Like for instance, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and so on. But we're looking for the greatest of those integers that's less than this and that integer would be 1. So also if we plugged in, let's say 1.67, the greatest integer that's less than this is also equal to 1. And essentially all the way up to 1.999, almost repeating but not quite since 1.9 repeating is 2, but essentially 2 is the boundary case. So something like 1.99 is also going to return 1 since the greatest integer less than this is also 1. But if we get up to 2 or cross past it, so something like 2.01, the greatest integer less than this would be 2. And if we went, let's say, up to 2.5, the greatest integer less than this would also be 2. And it doesn't move up to 3 until we get to 3 point something, or 3 itself. But if it's 2 point anything for the most part unless it's nine repeating then that's going to round down to two so essentially this is a type of rounding function so let me finish this example let's say we have 3.19 the greatest integer less than this would be three so whatever value we plug into this function it's going to round down to that nearest integer so to graph this function let's just get an idea of this so if we plug in 1, we know that we're going to get a function value of 1. And let me use this color here. And if we plug in 1.4, we also got that same value of 1. If we plug in 1.67, we got 1. 1 1.99, we got 1. But it does not include 2. So if we plug in 2, it's going to be all the way up here at 2. So since any value less than 2 is essentially going to be a y value of 1, we're going to put an open circle there since it's not including that endpoint. But any x value less than 2 or bigger than or equal to 1 will return this y value of 1. So that's 1 for y, 1 for x. Just to denote our scale here, we're going by 1 for all of these. And for 2, 
any value between two and three, but not including three, will return a y value of two. And if we do actually plug in three, we get a y value of three. So that's gonna be up here with a closed circle. And again, anything between x values of three and four, that's gonna return a y value of three. But at an x value of four, we're gonna put an open circle since that will actually return a y value of four. So that's gonna be a closed circle up here. So we get this step function and it's sort of like an infinite staircase. So this would actually continue on over here all the way to an x value of five, where again, it's gonna be this open circle. And even though we didn't make a table for it, we can work backwards. So when you plug in zero point anything, including zero, it's gonna return a y value of zero. So from zero to one, all the way to one, but not including one, since one is up at a y value of one, will have a y value of zero here. So between zero and one, not including one, y is equal to zero. And if we start looking at the negatives, from negative one, that would give us a y value of negative one, since integers always return their y values. So maybe that's a way to graph this a little bit quicker. So for negative two, the y value would be negative two. For negative three, we're at negative three. And negative four would give us negative four. Now, going back up here, we can look at the decimal parts. So between negative one and zero, the, the greatest integer that is less than or equal to that would be negative one. So on this interval of x values, the y value would be negative one, but it goes all the way to zero, but it doesn't include zero, since zero returns a y value of zero. And for negative two, all the way to negative one, it's gonna return a y value of negative two, not including the x value of negative one. And so you can see the pattern here. We can continue these, and I encourage you to try and redraw this yourself. Make a table of your own, try to think this through, because this can be a little bit complicated. This is an infinitely long piecewise function that effectively looks like an infinite staircase. Now, of course, we wouldn't actually draw in these dashed lines, but it completes the picture, since now you can visually see that it does look like a staircase.